Uh, our first uh, speaker uh, is the Professor Ondras Koltai, um, who is the president of the National Media and uh, Communication Authority of Hungary. Um, and he also teaches at the University of Public Service in Hungary. Uh, the title of uh, Professor Koltai's presentation is the protection of privacy in the Hungarian legal system with special regard to the freedom of expression. Unfortunately, Professor Koltai could not join us today, but he shared with us a video uh, presentation which will be played now. Hello everyone, thanks for inviting me to this uh, prestigious event. Um, I feel sorry that I cannot be with you in uh, person due to my uh, official commitments, but uh, still I, I send you this video recording of my presentation. <clears throat> the title of my presentation is uh, Photographing People in Public and the Protection of Privacy, and I'd like to um, examine uh, the jurisprudence of the European Court of Human Rights in this regard. <clears throat> I will talk about the aspect of privacy protection that is unique in several respects. Is it possible or necessary to consider a person's image, most often a photograph, as part of their private life? It is also possible to examine whether the protection of privacy can be claimed in public spaces or in places open to the public in general. Privacy in public spaces may at first seem like a conceptual contradiction. My talk is based on an analysis of case law, examining and analyzing the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. In recent years, the court has ensured a broader protection of private life vis-à-vis -vis the press and freedom of speech. Applicants who deem that their rights were not properly protected against the media by the law of the state, these rights primarily being the right to honor, reputation, right to one's own image and the right to private life, may turn to the European Court of Human Rights, the ECTHR. The most important ECTHR decision in this regard is von Hanover and Germany from 2004, which is certainly the key case of the being private in public doctrine, one which, and I quote, radically altered the extent to which the media can lawfully intrude into the private lives of the rich and famous, end quote. The applicant in this case was Caroline, the Princess of Monaco, who was a favorite target of the German tabloid press. Before she lodged a claim to Strasbourg, two tabloid papers had published photographs of the princess taken by the paparazzi and showing her in various situations. Some of the images were taken on public streets and others were taken in a restaurant, showing the princess having lunch with her new companion, while others were of Princess Caroline on the beach. Some of these pictures also showed her children. The princess turned to the German courts complaining of the violation of her privacy. The German Federal Constitutional Court went on to say that the images showing the applicant's underage child qualify as unlawful, as they violate the right to undisturbed family life, despite the fact that these images were made in a public place. The ECTHR, after, after the princess uh, applied to the Strasbourg court, went further. It ruled that the disclosure of pictures taken under circumstances where the princess would have had a reasonable expectation of privacy, for example, in the restaurant having lunch or on the beach, regardless of the fact that these qualify as public places, is a violation of Article 8 of the European Convention. The ECTHR stated that although the ability of public figures to protect their private life is narrower, their privacy is nonetheless acknowledged and protected by law. The general public is obviously very interested in the private life of Princess Caroline, but this in itself does not constitute an interest that trumps her rights. According to the court, a fundamental distinction needs to be drawn between reporting facts, even controversial ones, which are capable of contributing to a debate in a democratic society relating to politicians in the exercise of their functions, and the reporting of details of the private life of an individual who does not exercise any official functions. Although the right to inform the public may in some cases extend to publishing details about the private life of certain public figures, especially politicians, 
In this case, that does not apply. The sole aim in publishing the articles and photographs was to satisfy the curiosity of the audience by exposing the private life of the applicant, which cannot be considered necessary for a public debate. There was, therefore, a breach of Article 8 of the Convention in this case. According to this decision, respect for celebrities' right to privacy is not limited to secluded places, but can be extended to public places also, with some restrictions in the case of public figures. The images do not have to portray the public figure in a humiliating or indecent manner in order to qualify as infringement, just as the pictures of Princess Caroline showed her in her everyday situation and did not uncover any new intimate information. In this instance, it is interference in privacy per se, which qualifies as unlawful. As a result, <clears throat> the manner in which the press obtained the photographs and whether they effectively stalled the affected individual and hence whether these were paparazzi pictures is a secondary question. In the second von Hanover case, a couple of years later, also initiated at the request of the Princess of Hanover, the ECTHR held that the publication of a single photograph attached to a newspaper article containing information of genuine public interest showing her walking during a winter holiday with her third husband did not infringe her right to privacy. This is because the article was about the health of the prince's father, the Prince of Monaco, and the support his family members gave him during his serious illness. The discussion of this topic was considered to be information of public interest and there was no allegation that the photograph had been taken by the reporter by harassment or surreptitiously. The third von Hanover case was based on an article published in the newspaper Sieben Tage in 2002, which included a picture of Princess Caroline and her husband on holiday, along with several photos of their holiday home in Kenya. The pictures were illustrations from a newspaper article about how it has become common for the rich to rent out their holiday homes to paying guests. Caroline von Hanover filed a lawsuit against the publisher of the newspaper in question and requested a ban on further publication of her picture. The German court gave priority to freedom of expression and explained why the article could contribute to a debate in the general interest and therefore dismissed the plaintiff's claim. Caroline appealed for a third time to the ECTHR. The ECTHR found that Germany had not violated Article 8 of the European Convention. According to the court, the decision of the German courts that the article in question contributes to a debate on an issue of public interest cannot be considered unreasonable. The German courts carefully weighed the conflicting consideration in the light of ECTHR case law and also took into account that the ECTHR considered the plaintiff to be a public figure who is not entitled to the same degree of protection of her private life as a private individual. Another German case, Axel Springer and Germany, ECTHR also ruled in favor of the freedom of the media outlet when it decided in favor of the applicant. Previously, the German courts had banned the publication of photographs depicting the arrest of a well-known actor on suspicion of drug abuse at the Oktoberfest in Munich. According to the ECTHR, the person was a public figure whose unlawful conduct was information of public interest. The circumstances of the arrest were anyway such that the information could not conceivably remain secret. The publisher had received the information from the law enforcement authorities, and there was no reason to suspect that the anonymity of the person concerned should have been guaranteed. In PAC and the United Kingdom, a decision had to be made about the scope of the right to private life in connection with photographs taken in a public place, this time depicting a private person. The applicant, Mr. Peck, had attempted suicide on the streets by cutting his wrists. However, his loss of blood was not fatal, so he continued in a deranged state of mind to roam the streets with a knife in his hands. Closed-circuit television cameras, which had been installed on the streets of Brentwood not long before, recorded images of Peck. The applicant was recognizable in the recordings, 
Although the suicide attempt itself was not visible, only a confused man could be seen walking the streets with a kitchen knife in his hands. The local government intended to release the recordings to prove the legitimacy of introducing the CCTV cameras, which was a, a main uh, issue, a bit, was a big debate uh, in, the, in the city of Brentwood that time. Beck, Peck's objection and his request for an injunction were unsuc unsuccessful. After the images were broadcast on television, he did not sue, as it was obvious that he could not obtain any satisfaction on the grounds of the thought of breach of confidence, as the recordings were made in a public place, so he turned directly to the Strasbourg court. This time, the ECTHR established the breach of the applicant's right to private life. Despite the fact that he was in a public space, he did not consent, consequently become a public figure, and the disclosure of his image and the recordings represented a violation of his privacy that exceeds what would normally be acceptable in such a situation, especially as he was walking in the streets in a state of confusion. The court's standpoint that the observation of individuals in public places without recording any data does not raise any concerns with respect to the right to privacy is questionable. In the specific case, however, the images were recorded and the court accepted that the right to private life can apply even in public places. The infringement, therefore, was not the making of the recording per se, but its disclosure. The applicant did not have a public role and his being on the street could not be categorized as a public appearance. The decisions examined above can be used to identify the criteria against which the question analyzed in this paper can be judged. On the other hand, it has become clear that the image is to be interpreted within the private sphere and that the misuse of the image is a violation of the right to privacy. On deeper reflection, this is not self-evident in the case of people spending time in public spaces or places open to the public whose faces are necessarily public meaning that they are visible to others. It is also clear from the cases presented that under certain circumstances, people also have the right to privacy in public spaces and places open to the public. The notion of privacy in a public place may at first sight appear to be a paradox, but it is in fact very well justified, as privacy is not linked to a specific physical place or space, and it is primarily the nature of the activity carried out by the right holder that determines whether the right holder is entitled to protection at a given time. The physical space can of course be relevant. There is a stronger presumption that activities carried out in the home are protected, but not those carried out in a public space on the street. At the same time, it is possible to carry out activities in a private home that cannot be considered part of private life, for example, having an important discussion relating to public affairs at the kitchen table. Another important aspect is the reasonable expectation of privacy that emerges from the cases presented. In the street, in a public place, the privacy claim may not be as strong as if the right holder were in his or her home or in another private place. In public places, full protection of privacy cannot be guaranteed, of course. But knowing this, and knowing the nature of public places, the privacy that is normally afforded to those who are spending time that is easily identifiable. For example, people sitting at the next table in a restaurant can see each other eating and may overhear snippets of their conversation, but that is different from taking a photograph of the table with a telephone or lens or placing an audio recorder near it. The way that pictures are taken is also an important factor. If the photographer has harassed the person concerned, the balance may tip in favor of providing protection. See the first Hanover case. Deciding on cases involving photographs of people in special situations requires special judgment and individual consideration. In these cases, the interest in the right to information and in freedom of the press do not clearly prevail over the protection of privacy even when the facts are linked to public affairs. Examples include the PAC decision and the Norwegian case, Egeland and Hansen and Norway. 
In this case, two Norwegian newspapers published photographs of an individual who had been convicted of triple murder just before the pictures were taken. In the published pictures, he is seen after the decision, emotionally broken and sitting in a police car. According to the ECTHR, the sanction imposed by the Norwegian court for the publication of these pictures did not violate Article 10, even though the seriousness of the crime and the circumstances of the conviction may have been of public interest. The life situation depicted in the pictures qualify as events that fall within the protected privacy of an individual, even of a criminal. Hence, the important consideration in judging a case are therefore what the person has, was doing in the public place in question, how his or her conduct or the account of it can be linked to a public affair and exactly where he or she was. The last aspect worth highlighting is the priority given to the protection of children's rights. The first von Hanover decision largely concerned the issue of child protection. It is clear that photographs of children are much less likely to be associated with public affairs and, because of children's vulnerability, may inherently require stronger protection. The questions posed uh, in the, in the uh, introductory uh, sentences of this talk have been adequately answered by the case law of the CTHR. It is clear that one's image needs to be interpreted as an aspect of privacy and that the protection of privacy can also be claimed in public spaces and places open to the public. Certain general principles also emerge from this case law, which take into account the freedom to discuss public affairs, namely the protection of freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Based on the decisions examined, it seems that even a remote, indirect connection with the matter that qualifies as a public affair on the basis of a broad interpretation of the concept is sufficient to justify the protection of freedom of the press meaning that only purely tabloid content is excluded from protection. This creates an enhanced level of protection for this freedom and may also result in numerous frustrated privacy plaintiffs in the future. Thank you very much uh, for your time and I wish you all a fruitful discussions and a very successful conference. Thank you. Thank you.